Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the CCAC webinar titled Secondary Loop Mobile Air Conditioning Project Final Results and Path Forward. Uh, this webinar is being organized by the Climate and Clean Air Coalition or CCAC Secretariat. My name is Denise Yosun. I am the coordinator of the HFC initiative in the CCAC Secretariat. And um, I will now give you a short introduction about this webinar and the project that will be presented. Um, the Climate and Clean Air Coalition is a voluntary partnership of governments, intergovernmental organizations, businesses, scientific institutions, and other civil society organizations committed to improving air quality and protecting the climate through actions to reduce short-lived climate pollutants, such as black carbon, methane, tropospheric ozone, and hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs. One of the 12 initiatives of the coalition is the HFC initiative, which has supported activities and projects to promote climate-friendly alternatives and technologies since 2012. One of the work streams of the HFC initiative has a focus on technology demonstration projects, which aim to test and validate technologies that may be commercially viable alternatives to high global warming potential HFCs. And the technology demonstration of low global warming potential high efficiency mobile air conditioning project was implemented by the IGSD or Institute of Governance and Sustainable Development in collaboration with the automobile manufacturer Tata Motors that is based in India and the technology system supplier Male based in Germany. Now our webinar for today will be uh, for one hour and we'll begin with a presentation by our panelists from IGSD, Dr. Nancy Sherman and Male, Mr. Timothy Craig and Mr. Surab Choudhury, followed by a question and answer segment. At the end of the presentation, you may ask a question by raising your hand using the GoToWebinar software or by typing your question in the chat box. This webinar is being recorded and will be available in the CCAC website afterwards. So now I would like to give the floor to Dr. Sherman from IGSD, the Director for Technical Assessment. Dr. Thank Sherman. You, Denise. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for the introduction and welcome everyone. We are delighted to be talking about our Secondary Loop Mobile Air Conditioning Project. I'd like to introduce my co-presenters, co uh, Timothy Craig. He's Head of Thermal Pre-Development in Advanced Engineering at Malabar Choi in Lockport, New York, and Dr. Sudav Charuri. He's the Senior Project Engineer, excuse me, Senior Product Engineer also at Mala. The third partner in this project who isn't here is Tata Motors Limited, as Denise said. Uh, they aren't able to join us today, but they're well represented in the slides. Mala is a leading global supplier to the automotive industry and an industry development partner Tata Motors is a 45 billion global organization and the largest automobile manufacturer in India. And we'd especially like to thank the CCAC for making this cutting edge project possible by providing the funding. Okay, so many of you have seen this slide. It's the uh, slide of surface temperature change by Velders, uh, using data from Velders et al. from 2015. And it shows how the Kigali Amendment will phase down HFCs and prevent the business as usual scenario from happening. And the business as usual scenario without the HFC phase down is in red with a maximum temperature change of 0.5 degrees Celsius caused by HFCs. And by phasing down HFCs, much of that will be avoided by the year 2100. The not so good news is that mobile air conditioning is a very large contributor to climate change and global so, warming. Sorry, Dr. Sherman, this yes. is Denise. Um, we only see the cover uh, slide. Oh, okay. Um, how? Yes. Okay, um, now it's okay. Yeah, my, my slide has changed. Maybe a bit of a delay. Okay. 
So okay, so so um, so now you see the the Velder's base slide uh, showing the the phase down of uh, how the phase down of HFCs will reduce potential climate change by 2100. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, can I move on to this slide? Uh, the next Go slide ahead. is okay. The next slide is um, the not so good news is that a, a low GWP MAC refrigerants are used in only a fraction of vehicles so, sold globally. The low GWP MAC refrigerants being primarily HFO 1234YF or carbon dioxide. The solutions are needed for growing and emerging markets, especially in Asia and particularly in China and India, where the population is growing rapidly and standards of living are increasing rapidly. So this chart shows that how since 2013, there's a total of about half a billion vehicles on the road with mobile air conditioning using HFO 1234YF. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. Over half a billion vehicles on the road, period, with mobile AC uh, since HFO 1234YF was introduced. The amount of cars using HFO 1234YF is only 65 to 85 million, according to Chamours, one of the major suppliers. So there's a, many of the cars on the road are still using HFC 134A. So what is a secondary loop MAC system? The image on the left, is everybody seeing the, the slide with the image of the two systems? Yes, we are. Yes, okay. The image, the image on the left is the direct expansion system, which is used in most mobile air conditioners right now. And the image on the right is the secondary loop system. And you can see that the image on the right has a, has a loop in green, a, a piping loop in green, and that's where the refrigerant would go. In the direct expansion system on the left, the refrigerant moves throughout those purple tubes, which means that they actually enter the passenger compartment. In the secondary loop system, the purple tubes carry coolant, which is non-flammable, and can enter the, the passenger compartment without any risk to the passengers. So it also means that really any refrigerant can be used in a secondary loop system because the refrigerant stays only in the engine compartment. The secondary loop system also uses fewer fit fittings and shorter refrigerant hoses, so there's less chance of emissions of refrigerant. One of the key features about the secondary loop system is that the, you can see there's a purple tank on the right, an image on the right, and that holds the coolant. And that's called thermal ballast because it retains coolness even when a vehicle stops for a short period of time. So for example, if someone is making deliveries or stopping for a quick errand, when they get back into the vehicle, it will cool down much faster than in a direct expansion system. Or if you have a stop-start vehicle, it will save fuel because the car won't have to turn on while the vehicle is stopped in order to run the compressor to keep the vehicle cool. So it's a efficiency savings and a fuel emission savings. Our demonstration used a, a Tata Aria 2.2L uh, liter Dicor vehicle. It's a small utility vehicle that's shown on the right. And our goal was to show that the SL Max system can reduce refrigerant emissions and maximize energy efficiency by using improved powertrain control logic. And the powertrain control logic is just the software that is allows the powertrain and the air conditioning system to communicate. So it tells the, the air conditioning system when to turn on, when the, when the compressor should turn on. So for example, the compressor can turn off when the vehicle is accelerating or going up a hill which saves energy, and then it can turn back on to cool down the vehicle when the car is slowing down or, or going down a hill. So by maximizing that powertrain control logic, we, we get what's called enhanced air conditioning, and it takes maximum adva advantage of the motion of the vehicle to minimize fuel emissions and increase energy efficiency. Our partners, as has been said, are MALA, Tata Motors Limited and IGSD and dozens of collaborators and advisors. The refrigerants um, tested were HF, 
C-152A with a global warming potential of 138 and HFO 1234YF with a global warming potential less than one in an SLMAX system versus HFC 134A with a global warming potential of 1300 and HFO 1234YF in a direct expansion system. And of course, we are very, very grateful, as said before, for funding from the CCAC. Okay. So um, this slide shows our core SLMAC demonstration team and our uh, and advisors. Most of these were directly involved in the project. Um, from TML, the lead was Sangeet Kapoor with Prasanna Nagarhali, and Jagvendra Mina was the lead engineer. From Mala, Timothy Craig was the lead, and Lindsay Lietzel and Dr. Sourav Chaudhuri were the engineers. Uh, Jim Baker was our consultant. And IGSD, we were led by Steve, Dr. Steven Anderson and Melinda Soffer, and I participated with Kristen Tedonio. We also have this long list of advisors from four GM, California Air Resources Board, universities, NRDC, a wide list of advisors and experts to help guide us along the way. And it wasn't just building the, the vehicle, it was also developing new standards with the Society of Automotive Engineers, uh, doing a risk assessment update, doing a life cycle climate performance analysis, and just a very, very broad, comprehensive project. So why are SLMAC systems needed? As most of you know, HFC 134A is being phased out because of the Kigali Amendment. 1234YF is expensive, uh, it's covered by patents. It risks recharge substitution with HFC 134A because of the high cost. And in India, where our, where our project was based, about 25% of total HFC use is with MAX, and about 20% of the motor vehicle fuel used powers MAX. So it's a, HFCs are a very substantial factor in climate in India, and, and affordable, efficient, low GWP options are needed. So why not direct expansion with a low GWP refrigerant? Direct, direct expansion limits your refrigerant choice. It has to be 134A, 1234YF for carbon dioxide. 134A is being phased down, 1234YF is expensive, and CO2, which many are interested in, has very expensive components, has t performance concerns at high ambient temperatures. So it's used in very, very limited areas right now and very limited markets. Secondary loop widens the engineering options, many more, and several more choices. Uh, we understand hydrocarbons are possibly being tested in secondary loop systems in the international market. And it allows for innovative engineering to maximize energy efficiency through use of the powertrain control system. And there's also savings potential with the consumer, with fuel and air conditioning maintenance savings, and the manufacturer savings through refrigerant cost control, fewer leaks, fewer repairs under warranty. So, a secondary loop system provides advantages with an R 134A system, 1234YF, or 152A. All of these, you have fewer fittings and shorter hoses for lower leak rates, higher reliability and lower service cost. You have this capacity for cold storage and a quicker cool down after a quick stop. A smaller refrigerant charge. You have manufacturing savings versus a direct expansion 1234YF system in a car with two, two cooling points, front and back. There's less air conditioning system noise and vibration because of the shorter hoses and the fewer connections. There's lower life cycle TFA emissions, that's trifluoroacetic acid. Um, it occurs in the environment, very small emissions with 1234YF, but, but 152A has no TFA emissions. There's reduced likelihood of service recharge with 134A extended stop start and improved life cycle climate performance versus direct expansion 134A systems. We included 152A in the test because it's more affordable, it works at a lower pressure, so it has higher efficiency and a high ambient temperature. There's more than a 95% reduction in direct refrigerant emissions impact due to the reduced charge and lower GWP. 
has good life cycle climate performance, no TFA, and importantly, it satisfies the US EPA Significant New Alternatives Program, or SNAP, and the EU FGAS Directive, which requires the GWP less than 150. So now I'll turn it over to Tim Craig and Dr. Chawaduri to talk about the uh, system and some of the technical aspects of the Secondary Loop MAC program. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Can you hear me all right? I certainly can. Okay, good. Well, this is Tim Craig, uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, give an update to the uh, those on the line relative to the technical aspects of this project. I'll give a quick introduction and and then uh, Saraf Chowdhury, who is the principal investigator, will go through the technical details. Uh, so first, in addition, let me uh, thank the other members of the project, certainly IGSD and also CCAC for, for funding this activity. Uh, I wanted to give a, a bit of perspective on this system relative to the applicability of secondary loop technology in the automotive environment. Because we are a supplier, we work very closely with the OEMs, and uh, we look at very at various aspects of technology and the opportunity for an OEM to uh, adopt that technology. In addition, secondary loop, when you look at it from multiple aspects that would be of a customer concern, uh, it's, it's applicable. First of all, if you think about complexity, uh, although there are some additional components added, the relative level of complexity of a secondary loop is in what I would call the simple category relative to uh, automotive technologies that can be implemented. Uh, secondly, you sometimes look at readiness. Is a technology ready for implementation? Uh, this technology is ready. The components needed to apply it are all in the market today. So there is not a technical barrier in terms of readiness to use the technology. Then you look at the effort required to apply it, and this is in the category of what I would say is normal development. There are no special development techniques needed. There are some additional challenges around packaging additional parts and carrying some of the additional mass, but we believe that with this technology, the benefits outweigh those costs. The second aspect I wanted to just over, put, give an overview on before Suroff begins discussing the technical details is energy efficiency to give you a perspective on what that means. Uh, Nancy did a great job of talking about how we can integrate uh, powertrain control with the cooling technology that's, that's discussed here. And just as a food for thought, think about it. Is it possible to save more energy for on a vehicle level than the AC system uses? That may seem counterintuitive to those on the line, but actually that's what we demonstrated by appropriately using the powertrain controls with the ability to store cold energy. We were able to show that we can save more energy at a vehicle level than the AC system actually uses. So again, that may seem counterintuitive, but uh, that's the beauty of innovation. So again, the, the, the advantage of this system is that we are able to store cold energy while the system is operating and take advantage of that stored energy to be able to turn off the compressor at appropriate times and match it with the powertrain demands to improve the fuel economy. So with that perspective, I'll turn it over to uh, Sirap Chowdhury to go through the technical details. Uh, thank you, Tim. I will go over the technical details, uh, which are approximately, I think, slide 12 to slide 23. And then I will turn over to Nancy to finish the presentation. The hey, um, slide, Dr. Chaudhuri, we're having a little trouble hearing you. Can you maybe get a little closer to the mic? Sure. Can you hear me now better? That is much better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the first slide, um, uh, the technical slide, which is slide number 12, shows the Tata Area SL Max Bench testing uh, setup. So we did this project uh, in two phases. One is on the bench, which means a, a setup which is similar to the vehicle setup prepared on the bench and studied carefully with uh, due instrumentation. 
uh, to understand the system capacity, the nuances of how the system works, and uh, accordingly make changes to the system and components to improve it. And once the system is uh, verified on the bench, we have taken those components back to the vehicle and implemented the system on the vehicle and tested the vehicle. So the first um, uh, slide here shows that we started at a component level. We took the evaporator, which is cooling the air from the vehicle, and we tested that separately as one component. We also looked at the condenser from the vehicle, and this evaporator in our uh, SL Max system is replaced by a chiller and a cooler combination. The pictures are shown uh, for the chiller. The cooler looks very similar to an evaporator. And this combination is tested separately as well. Uh, on a system bench, which is shown on the right side, we connected the different components, including the coolant loop, as it would be on the vehicle with the similar line length and uh, similar level of instru instrumentation. And we tested this uh, at our Lockport uh, New York facility. Uh, Nancy, can you please move the slide to the next slide, 13? Okay, this shows the schematic of the test setup. Uh, the refrigeration system is shown on the top part of the sketch, which has a compressor which compresses the refrigerant, feeds into the condenser, which is shown by the uh, orange rectangle. The condenser condenses the refrigerant, passes it to a TXV or a, or a refrigerant valve, and that expands the refrigerant into a chiller. The chiller has another stream running through it, which is shown by the blue uh, lines at the bottom part of the sketch. That is the coolant loop. The, the coolant goes through the chiller, the refrigerant on the other side is the coolant, and the cold coolant is fed to uh, two coolers. The, there are two coolers uh, because the system on the Tata area has a front evaporator and a rear evaporator. Front evaporator is for the front driver and passenger climate control, and the rear evaporator is for the second and third row seats. So the coolant is fed to the coolers in those two locations. There is a reservoir which can accumulate uh, the amount of uh, coolant which is chilled by the chiller, and it can dispense it based on the requirement uh, of the vehicle. Um, as you will uh, notice that on the top part, which is the refrigeration cycle, there are um, shown uh, O-ring joints before and after the condenser, before and after the compressor, and at the TXV. These joints are where uh, refrigeration, refrigerant from the system can leak out and cause uh, global warming. So in this particular secondary loop system, we have reduced the number of joints compared to the direct system in the baseline vehicle significantly. And later on in the presentation, you will see the effect of reducing those number of joints and reducing the leakage as a result. Can we please have slide 14? In the slide 14, we see the two um, comparisons. One on the right is according to the SAE J2727 standard. We have done calculations to show the baseline area system, direct system versus the SL Max uh, area system, what the difference is in R134 emissions in grams of refrigerant per year of usage. Um, we have um, done this calculation with uh, 
assumption that the compressor has a single uh, lip seal versus it has a double lip seal. So you have uh, the left column, you have one and two showing those two variants. The baseline versus SL max shows significant reduction up to, uh, I think, between uh, 40 to 50 percent approximately reduction in refrigerant. This is just pure calculation based. On the uh, left hand side, uh, the blue uh, table shows uh, the actual test which is conducted according to SAE J2763 standard. And there are two uh, types of tests. One is a static test and one is a dynamic test. The difference is the static test is the refrigerant system is put into a chamber and we measure the amount of refrigerant that gradually being leaked from the ref system into the chamber without the system being turned on. In the dynamic test, the same setup is uh, turned on, and then after a while, we measure the result of the uh, emissions. And we are seeing that uh, up to 60% reduction in uh, refrigerant uh, emission is uh, observed on the SLMAX system with respect to the baseline system. So both by calculations, which is showing 40 to 50%, and by actual test measurement, which is showing up to 60%, we are reducing the amount of refrigerant emission of 134A. Next slide, please. So this chart summarizes the test results on the vehicle, which is performed first by Male at our Lockport facility, and then the vehicle was transferred to Tata facility in Pune, India, and they performed these set of tests or measurements to assess how we are faring against the baseline vehicle. So of course, we are using this uh, low GWP refrigerant, which is one of the targets. By the way, the targets were set sometime in the early phase of the project after understanding the system um, behavior and the system uh, requirements, uh, Tata and Male uh, jointly set these targets uh, to ensure that the progress of the project is in the right direction. So we are, by using the 152A and 134A refrigerant, 1234YF refrigerants, we have met the GWP reduction target. In our uh, system, because we have a very compact system, which is uh, shown on the upper part of the sketch that I referred to a couple of slides before, we are reducing the amount of refrigerant significantly. The baseline vehicle came with uh, 800 grams of 134A refrigerant, and we re reduced the amount of refrigerant to approximately 430 grams which is amounting to approximately 46%. Target of 40% is met. The average cabin temperatures, there are two rows there. Uh, these are tests of actually how the AC system is cooling down the inside of the cabin in the vehicle. The criteria is at 25th minute, at two different temperatures, 35 degrees centigrade and 45 degrees centigrade, which is very high temperature. Uh, we need to be at the baseline level, which is about 21.8 degrees centigrade and 28.9 degrees centigrade. So the baseline car gave those two types, of, those, those two numbers uh, or temperatures at 25th minute into the test. When you start the car on and you uh, gradually cool down the vehicle at the 25th minute, what is the internal average temperature in the cabin? Uh, the target is um, to meet the baseline, basically. And we are seeing that with the 152A results, 23.8 degrees centigrade and 31.5 degrees centigrade 
are achieved by the system. Let me explain why we are exceeding the cooling target or we are exceeding the temperature uh, target. In our setup, when we observed what are the requirements to meet the baseline, we wanted to increase the compressor capacity because 152A system required that. However, the vehicle's um, mechanics and the design of the components are such that it could not accommodate a larger sized compressor. There is a physical limitation to that. We discussed with Tata engineers and we agreed that uh, we will continue to use the baseline vehicle's compressor, which is smaller size than we need. And we will calculate at the end of the test what would be the requirement, what would be the result if we had a appropriately sized compressor. So uh, the deficiency in cooling by approximately about a degree or two degrees that we are observing would be easily met if we had the appropriately sized compressor. The next uh, couple of lines are related to the power consumption. As you see, the compressor power consumption in the baseline is 5.5 .5 kilowatts at 2400 engine RPM. We wanted to reduce it by 5 to 8 percent. And in fact, our test at Tata uh, has shown that 9.6 percent reduction, which is quite significant. Part of the reason why the reduction is there is because R152A, as Nancy mentioned earlier, has a lower operating pressure. And as a result, the compressor doesn't have to work as much in order to provide the cooling with 152A. Um, the rise of grill temperature in city cycle tests, where we are actually switching the compressor off temporarily when we are at a traffic stop, we observed the grill temperature rise to be about two degrees centigrade. The target was approximately two degrees, and the baseline system, of course, had a much higher rise in temperature showing that the baseline system cannot afford to have a compressor turned off, whereas the secondary loop system can afford to have that compressor turned off. The fuel economy uh, on an Indian drive cycle, uh, which is basically the, the main reason why to, we wanted to do this project is to improve the fuel economy, apart from using the um, lower GWP refrigerant. Um, we observed that we are getting about 1.9% to 2.6% in a mix of a city type tra uh, traffic uh, uh, drive cycle uh, and a highway type drive cycle. In a city cycle, we have a stop and go type traffic. You drive a little bit and you stop at a stoplight or at a traffic stop and then you move on again. Um, this type of driving behavior is not very efficient with respect to the miles you drive. On a highway drive cycle, you have a high speed driving and almost a constant speed for longer durations. And you have much less frequent stops. So we have to assess our benefits on both these type of cycles. Or driving routines. The target was 3% and with the highway type of conditions, I think we are meeting that uh, because we did a couple of tests, our range of uh, fuel economy calculation or measurements varied between approximately 1.9 to 2.6. Um, I want to mention on this point a little bit uh, more because this is a very important uh, criteria for uh, the, our customers. Um, we implemented, together with Tata, we implemented a logic when to turn the compressor off. Um, this was fine-tuned after a couple of testing um, routines 
and we observed that uh, we are getting a fuel benefit, fuel economy benefit right away without turning the engine off. Now, when we are at a traffic stop, we can very easily turn the engine off and get an even higher benefit in fuel economy. We could not implement that uh, because the vehicle didn't have the capability to accept a start-stop of engine technology. So we just performed a start-stop of compressor part. So if you see the last bullet point in that uh, lowest row, it says engine idle stop strategy will increase fuel economy. That is what we mean when we say that in a future vehicle, if we could implement this stopping of the engine during an idle condition or during a traffic stop, we would save even higher amount of energy. Uh, Nancy, kindly move to slide 16. Um, this is our uh, vehicle in uh, testing phase when we have uh, Tata engineer, Engineering Manager uh, Prasanna Nagarhali visit us at Lockport. And we had demonstrated to him the progress of the project at that point. Uh, this is almost at the final phase in the project when we are wrapping up our final vehicle testing at Lockport facility. Right after this picture was taken, the very next day, we started uh, the process of shipping this vehicle back to uh, Pune, where they performed more detailed tests. Here we see Mr. Jagavendra, who came, uh, who is a uh, technical expert at uh, TML, and who came to observe the, the testing process and assist us with uh, data analysis. This is uh, this picture shows the Tata area vehicle, the one that we worked with, and an identical sister vehicle. These two vehicles were road tested uh, in India in several locations, both on a city traffic as well as a highway type condition. And the fuel economy was measured from these tests. Um, this slide shows exactly what I was talking about uh, relative to the compressor not being appropriately sized. The blue bars shows, the blue columns rather, shows the, um, the system's fuel economy if we move from the R1, uh, from uh, R152A secondary loop to R152A with a logic of compressor stopping during idles. And finally, with R152A with compressor stopping as well as engine stopping. The engine stopping part is an estimation based on the fuel economy numbers that we arrived at or found from our testing. So following these blue bars progress, you can see that uh, our fuel economy is slightly deficient based on the R134A baseline if we continuously run the compressor. If we introduce this logic, which we did in, on the vehicle, we are exceeding the R134 fuel economy by approximately 2%, 2.2%, which is quite significant in in automotive world. Um, and then going to this new logic, um, Nancy, can I finish off with the previous slide? With the new logic, we can see that we can achieve up to 9%. The red bars are, if we appropriately size the compressor, we estimated those, and you can see that the progress is very similar. We can achieve up to 8% fuel economy improvement with uh, the best logic applied. In the next slide, here we see the progression, how we get from our standard refrigerant 134A system, right now we see in most vehicles 
how we get to a very very low G, uh, very very low GHG emission from uh, Max. The first step shows if we enhance the current system, uh, just improving, for example, the hoses and the joints and the compressor type we get a significant benefit waiting to happen 44 percent then if we have this vehicle and improve it with proper insulation proper kind of glass which reflects most of the heat we will get an additional 15 percent benefit finally if we implement start stop logic we get another four percent benefit approximately and with the new refrigerant 152a introduced which requires less power from compressor you get an additional seven percent so overall we get approximately 95 percent benefit if we can walk through this process and implement it in all the vehicles this is a similar chart as discussed before uh, here we show the indian drive cycle if you see the first city phase has frequent stops and starts and the vehicle speed is relatively low in the highway cycle we have a high speed driving there are some um, decelerations and accelerations but there are almost uh, there are actually no uh, stoppage of the vehicle in that phase and we uh, achieve the fuel economy as i mentioned with stopping the compressor as well as stopping the engine uh, uh, to conserve the fuel economy or the fuel usage. Uh, so this is overall what the project achieved. We reduced the amount of charge in the uh, in the refrigerant system the, from uh, about 800 to 430 grams, and we also improved the leakage by improving the joints and reducing the number of joints from about 37 to about 59 percent and um, finally by as I mentioned by walking through these different steps in technology improvement we can reduce the total GAG emission by 95 percent I think this is the final um, picture after the vehicle project uh, ended this is uh, in about February 2018. And in the middle of the picture, um, our beloved Dr. Steven Anderson uh, shows uh, in, the, in the picture where he actually visited uh, the facility and observed the final testing process. Thank okay. you for taking over this slide. Yes, so um, I'll take over and um, the figures for these slides were uh, produced and calculated by Kristen Tedonio, who I think um, is on the line, um, but it shows the projected secondary loop manufacturing and ownership cost for India for a two cooling point system, cost and savings in US dollars. So. Um, for in terms of the refrigerant the charge in a direct expansion system with 134a is 800 grams with 1234yf it's 750 grams and for secondary loop system it's almost half at 430 grams so the the co2 equivalent uh tons for the initial charge is 1.04 for 134a but less than 0.01 for 1234YF and less than 0.1 for 152A. The added manufacturing costs uh, baseline is the R134A system. There, there's uh, additional costs for 1234YF and that includes both the components and the cost of the refrigerant and uh, increase of $36 for 152A. Again, including the extra components and the refrigerant charge as well as the reduced cost for the refrigerant the service cost it's estimated that there would be fewer services with the secondary loop system so uh, it's 50 of uh, 57 dollars every three to five years for 134a for 1234 yf it's 133 dollars every three to five years 
And for secondary loop system with fewer services, it's $54 every six to 10 years. So the annual fuel savings for the secondary loop system would be up to 37 liters at $37 at a dollar per liter and a savings of, of one ton of CO2 equivalent over 10 years. So in summary, there are original equipment manufacturer savings, owner savings, service, and citizen benefits. For OEMs, there's a lower refrigerant cost with multiple suppliers, higher reliability, it's a more environmentally responsible product, has potential for MAC credits. For owners, there's higher reliability, lower service costs, and fuel savings. Service shops and technicians have the advantage of the secondary loop system makes do-it-yourself servicing less attractive. And for the community, it's cleaner air and less climate forcing. So in terms of communications, the, pre the project has been widely publicized since its beginning in July 2016. There have been 14 papers and presentations by the entire team, uh, members of the team since July 26. Audiences have been Montreal Protocol meetings, industry, and public audiences. In addition to the IGSD reports, there have been milestone reports submitted by Mali and Tata Motors according to schedule including their very, very substantial final reports. 11 meetings and side events have been conducted or attended to present the project progress and the results. And there's been coverage in more than 20 mainstream and industry media, media as a result of the press releases and papers, including Reuters, Economic Times, and Automotive Engineering Magazine. And this slide just gives a, a, a portion, not entirely complete, um, because they don't fit, of uh, the presentations and papers that have been given on, on the project, including uh, a 2019 presentation at the SAE Society of Automotive Engineers World Congress um, just this past spring by Kristen and Tim. So the bottom line question is, how will the Kigali Amendment infect mobile air conditioner engineering? And the answer is that the amendment will accelerate the transition away from 134A. Solutions are urgently needed in emerging and growing markets, which are very price sensitive. The traditional direct expansion design has drawbacks that limit refrigerant choices. Electric vehicles are now looking at MAC innovation. And new designs such as secondary loop engineering allow options and engineering solutions that can improve fuel economy and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So thank you for listening. We really appreciate your attention. And now we'd be happy to take any questions you might have. Thanks, Nancy. Um, so right now, everyone is muted uh, or are in listen-only mode. But if you can click the raise hand button that's located in the in the control panel, I will be able to uh, unmute you. So when you ask your question, please don't forget to introduce yourself, including your country and your organization. Okay, uh, we have a question from Mr. Gabriel Hoffman. So I'm going to unmute you. Uh, you have the floor. Mr. Hoffman from Germany, can you uh, unmute yourself if you're muted? You can ask your question now. Uh, uh, sorry, Miss Gabrielle. Yeah, uh, we can hear you, but uh, not very loudly. If you can speak closer to the microphone. We cannot hear you very well. Uh, maybe I can write my question? Yes, if you can write your question, um, that will be helpful. We can hear you, but it's very faint right now. So you can also write your question in the in the chat box. Okay, um, so
so I'm still looking at um you know uh if you if you can raise your hand using the control panel that would be helpful meanwhile while you're trying to figure that out or maybe typing your question i i had a question for um for mr timothy and mr sorav um in terms of like the future uh what are your plans uh um moving forward now that uh, we have this uh, technology tested this uh would m might be interesting for for many of the participants Yes, thanks, Denise. Uh, first of all, the, the, the ability for OEMs to apply this is is ready today for future vehicles, and they typically take you know two to three years to develop. So the components are ready, and we're we're willing and anxious to work with any OEMs that are interested. Uh, the second main activity that is still underway. It needs to need to be completed before it's uh, used commercially. Is getting the uh, standards updated so that the appropriate design uh, aspects of the system can be applied. The standards I'm referring to have been used for many many years as guidelines for the uh, safe application in of, of technology in mobile air conditioning systems. So uh, along with Kristen. Sedonio and others, we are working with the uh, SAE uh, committee to establish those standards. Uh, they will probably take uh, some months to complete, but essentially our plan is to uh, continue to market this to, uh, to our OEM customers and to support them in development, as well as complete those standards that I mentioned. Okay, that's very um, helpful. Uh, the question from uh, Ms. Hoffman was, uh, did you try or calculate with hydrocarbons? And do you also include hydrocarbons in the standards? Uh, we, we did not use hydrocarbons in, in this particular case, um, and, and we did not calculate with those. Uh, they are really in the early stages of evaluation right now. Um, one of the key elements that has that has been accomplished for all the refrigerants that Nancy mentioned that are uh, compliant with the EU directive and also approved by the, uh, the US EPA is that they have had risk assessments completed to show that they can be um, appropriately applied in mobile air conditioning environment without uh, additional risk to any user or passenger. So one of the key elements that needs to be completed relative to hydrocarbons is to clearly understand uh, the size of the refrigerant charge that's needed and then evaluate any potential risks that would come from that. So uh, that work is underway in various communities uh, throughout the world, actually, and we're monitoring that and assisting where needed. Um, and Denise, um, this is uh, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If I could just um, answer your question about the future um, in a, um, some of the ideas we've discussed about the future and that make a lot of sense would be to first to scale up the project to uh, uh, try using the SLMAX system on a on a fleet of vehicles and especially trucks or delivery or delivery vehicles delivery vehicles like vans that make a lot of uh, stops where the secondary loops ability to store coolness would be especially helpful or also at trucks either small or large trucks where there's more room under the hood for a secondary loop max system it makes perfect sense to to try installing and testing this system and especially in a price sensitive market where uh, like like a truck market where they might be wanting to shave off every penny from their operating costs they might be very interested in 152a but again the standards do need to be set for that yeah and one one follow-up denise quickly i think uh, we recognize that part of ccac's uh, objectives and mission is to uh to reduce or you know um, phase down the use of hfcs and of course we focused on using an HFC here, um, but our goal all along was to get the lowest carbon solution we could to have a, an economic solution for the growing application of, 
of air conditioning in vehicles. So uh, that's why we, we've continued to focus on the use of R152A. It's a very efficient refrigerant and helps in the, giving us the lowest carbon solution of those approved refrigerants. And that's why even though the HFC phase down is a goal, uh, it's a good solution in this particular application. Yes, thank you very much for your responses. And indeed, like uh, I would uh, also assume that for many governments, fuel efficiency is quite important. So it was very interesting how you looked at fuel efficiency. And when you're selling this to the OEMs, I think um, they will be particularly interested in the data that you had collected on that. So we have a few more minutes for maybe a last question, if anybody is interested in raising their hands. Um, okay, we have a, a other questions from the floor. I think the others have to disconnect because uh, of the time limitations. So um, I would just want to inform everyone who are on the line that if you have additional questions, please feel free to send an email to the CCAC Secretariat. You also have my direct um, email that was uh, circulated or sent through the um, webinar registration link. So we're happy to um, respond to any additional questions you may have in writing. So I think um, at this point, if it's okay, I would like to ask uh, maybe our panelists to give some final uh, words. Uh, Tim and Surav? Sure. Well, first of all, again, I appreciate the opportunity to demonstrate uh, the, the, the enormous potential that this technology has. It's an exciting uh, future in the uh, air conditioning environment to not only provide all the benefits for comfort and fuel economy, as well as uh, driver alertness that come from using air conditioning, but do it in a, in a fuel efficient and carbon, minimum carbon uh, footprint environment. So we look forward to working with OEMs and uh, those interested in, in applying the, the secondary loop system and using R152A as a refrigerant. So thanks again for your time and, and everyone's participation. And I would like to echo Tim's thanks to everyone for their interest and for participating. We would be delighted to answer any questions that may come, you may think of later. And I'd especially like to thank CCAC for the funding and also especially to thank Mala and TML, not here, for their incredible amount of work that went into this project and their, their dedication and seriousness and the commitment to a better climate for all of us. It's, this presentation doesn't begin to show how much work is behind these few slides. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. Um, just a few questions I received as well in terms of sharing the presentation. Yes, um, those that participated and registered will receive the presentation as well as the link to the recording of this webinar. And I'd also like to point out that um, in the control panel, there's a section on handouts. And there you can find the final technical report of the project. And there, there, there will be more details as well um, in, ter in terms of the results. Again, thank you so much to our um, distinguished panelists and speakers. Thank you so much uh, to IGSD, to Male, and to Tata, who uh, couldn't be here but has been a, an instrumental um, partner in the implementation of this project. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, the webinar has now been concluded. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.